This week on Mags on Media, how Air France wants you to look skyward, love the brand and download music. We'll go in-depth with a leading US brand and behavioural consultant and also how a South African tertiary institution is advertising using cinema to attract students. Welcome to Mags on Media. Well, all of that is still to come, but we are going to start this week with South Africa's premier festival of creativity, the Luris, and its global equivalent, the Can Lions, and what both programs have up their sleeves. Andrew Human is the chief executive officer of the Luris. Ryan Williams is with us. He's with Cinemark that represents the Lions here in South Africa. To both of you, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Andrew, let's start with you. And the theme this year, Be the Most Famous You, I think is what you're touting. What are you trying to say? It really is based around the concept that everybody Googles their own name. And you always Google your name and you find there's some poet or flower seller or motivational speaker and even dog trainer who's ahead of you in the rankings. And uh, the idea is if you want to find your name at the top of the Google list, enter the Luries, walk on stage and you will be the most famous you. Speak for yourself, Mr. Newman. I've never Googled myself at all. Nor have you, Ryan, have you? We don't do Not this. We, we, have we have jobs to do, which is important. As far as the Can Lions is concerned, the big thrust that you've always had at Cinemark is supporting young creatives in the country. Why is that important and what do you do? The future of the industry depends on finding fresh talent. And I think, you know, like every other sector, there's pressure on um, finding good quality talent. And the second kind of area, I think, is that, is that creativity and innovation really matters. And that's kind of how society progresses and moves forward. And in our little world and in our sector, we think that, that creativity matters from a marketing point of view just as much as it matters in film. What about a focus on young creatives in South Africa as far as the Luris is concerned? Is that at the top your agenda? Absolutely. I think exactly mm. as Ryan mm. says, the, you know, if, if you're looking at the industry and you say who's going to be the executive creative director in five or ten years' time, you have to be saying, well, who's leaving school today mm. and who's starting studying career? So you have to create incentives and inspiration. So what you really want is the youngest, talented kids going, that's what I want to be doing. So we actually also run a uh, Young Creatives <coughs> program and we run a Creative Future Scholarship program uh, with high schools. Uh, apart from that and Googling yourself to find out how famous you are, <laughs> Andrew, um, there's an interesting development this year. Unilever, one of the big multinational brands, has partnered with you to promote something called sustainable marketing. This is a very interesting area of ours and it, has, it actually differs quite a lot from the usual suspects. So it's not about advertising campaigns, it's actually where we're looking at the brands and we're looking at the big corporations and we're saying, as a corporation, as someone who's doing business in the country, are you in essence a good neighbor? Mm. So are you doing good while you're doing business? That's really what we want to look at. So we're not looking at CSI programs, we're not looking at charity. It's actually a very interesting thing. We want to look at, a, at almost a selfish behavior to say, can you be a good neighbor and can you benefit financially from it as a brand? How do you find a winner? You have to enter, which is one of the important things. So we want brands to know that they actually have to motivate for their programs. Then we have a, an entry process where you, you fill in a, a number of questions. And that is actually all the entry forms are pre-assessed by a partner of ours called Greater Capital, mm -hmm. which is a, a, a company that assesses NGO programs. And so they review every entry independently. They provide a report on every entry. And then we have a judging panel who go over those reports and make a final decision. It's almost a, an inevitability and a necessity in an award of this nature that if brands aren't doing this, I think, Andrew, you put it as doing good while doing good business, then a brand is dead in the water anyway. Again, if you look at a big international competition like the Lions, is that something that they also focus on with a, with a, a degree of importance? And one of the trends I picked up at the awards last year was a renewed focus by brands on really integrating uh, a social conscience at the heart of their work. Um, most of the winning brands operated in that sort of space. So I think it's something that, that's being driven kind of by the businesses mm. themselves. In terms of, of the way Lions is put together, I mean, there's always been recognition mm. of work that does good, mm. but not necessarily uh, work that does good that wins Grand Prix. Mm. Well, leading on from that, Andrew, it's one's 
also got to look for an element of authenticity as far as this is concerned. You can see through a brand that's just doing it for an award's sake. The key yeah. thing with this award, the Ubuntu Award that we've launched, differs from Can in that um, it's not simply about an ad campaign uh, for, the, for a social program. So we, for example, still have categories for campaigns where you're looking at a campaign for an uh, NGO mm. or a not-for-profit organization or something like the uh, NSPCA and so on. But what you're looking at now here is we're actually looking at the brand, as you say, the corporation, and we're saying, is it just window dressing or is your presence here actually adding value in the long run? Mm. So it's a much more complex question than is that a good campaign promoting a cause. Let me ask you another thing, uh, Ryan, about the, the can this year. That they've added something called, I think, Made in Sweden <coughs> or Made yep. at Sweden to the Academy lineup this year. How did the Swedes get in on the act and I why? I have no yeah. idea, <laughs> and I wish I could give you a direct yeah. answer. There's, there's uh, three new academies that they've launched yeah. this year. So previously, you know, they focused on young creatives. They've added the Made at Sweden one, which is um, a way to help unpack, I think, what what creativity means in a Swedish culture. Mm. They've brought some great innovation over the last right, few so years. Lots of Volvos, lots of ABBA. I'm just trying to think no. what else there might be there. Uh, <laughs> businesses more recently, things yeah. like uh, Spotify, mm. Ikea, in, you know, over the last couple of decades. So not just from a business point of view, but, but culturally, what is it that they're doing that's different um, to try and drive creativity? What so do you think one? of that idea? And is there room for something like that in your competition or your festival? For Made in Sweden. Well, not necessarily Made in Sweden, but just showcasing the, the, the attributes Africa. and the virtues. Well, of I'm going to get to that in a minute. Why isn't there Made in South Africa at Cannes? You can think about that one. But just importing you know, international culture into a festival like the Lewis. So, again, overall what we aim to show is the quality of the work produced in our region. Mm. So the Luris is open to South Africa as well as the whole of continental Africa and the Middle East. So the idea is... You, with the Luris is a regional award. So mm. we are specifically saying made in our region. That is exactly what the Luris is about. So we want to show this is the quality of the work that comes out of our region. I think Cannes is very interesting because it's the sort of international competitive platform. Yeah. So you find different countries are vying for market share. So made in Sweden, I'm sure there's some Swedish, what are they, Krona, mm. that are behind that campaign. And uh, for the last couple of years, Brazil has put an enormous amount of money into marketing itself at Cannes. And your question is absolutely valid. I think as South Africa, we do an appalling job of marketing ourselves at Cannes, and we really need to up our game. In the broadcasting business, Ryan, that's called an elegant segue into you. How do you respond to that? <laughs> And it's got a point. I mean, it, w it, it would be useful if South Africa used that international platform to market itself and its, its agencies and the work that we do. I think so, because we've got a, a reasonably good track record mm. as a country. We, we box above our weight quite mm. effectively in terms of the output and, and the awards that we've garnered over the years at Cannes, um, for the work as well as the kind of jurors that are, that are sitting on the panel. I mean, this year we've got um, a lot of big names uh, in the South African game sure. going mm. up. So I think we are well represented in terms of the work and the people, but not necessarily in terms of, of the, the country per se or how we structure things. And what they're doing at Cannes is broader than just the marketing sector. It's about product innovation, it's about brand innovation, um, business thinking. So there's a far broader spread that they're trying to cover. And I think that's a very difficult thing to co coalesce in a South African context. I'm sensing a telephone call between Brand South Africa and Cinemarket uh, at some point. We're very happy to facilitate the debate. Gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Coming up on Mags on Media, the importance of culture change in an organization and the impact that has on the brand. News that moves. ENCA.com.